Welcome to The Living Legends. I am Fayaz Qureshi. In this edition of The Living Legends, we speak to a Kenyan who was in an association of two people for 10 years. Throughout her life, she has kept breaking barriers and has been honoured by the state a trailblazer. She has served as the Vice President of the International Criminal Court, holding that office when focus was on six Kenyans charged there following the 2007-2008 post-election violence. Today, she is still active, but as a mediator, educator, and transformation consultant, we speak to Lady Justice retired Joyce Alwatch. You could start off by telling us uh, where you were born, your early life, primary education, and high school. I was born in Kisumu, though I actually originate from Ugenya, which is now in Siaya County. Mm -hmm. I went to school, uh, first years of my education were at the village level. Then after four years, there was a prestigious girls' school called Nia Girls' School. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started my boarding school at Standard 5 at Nia Girls' School. The girls I met there, some of them are still my friends to date. Rose Arungu, mm -hmm. who was my classmate, yeah. she was my best mate. Uh, at the, my wedding, which is now 51 years ago. Congratulations. Thank you. May the Almighty always bless your union. Thank you. Uh, Patricia Dalla, uh, Mildred uh, War, several, several uh, girls that I, people personalities. that I met at that school. After that, I, was, um, I went to Butere Girls School and then Limuru Girls School for my f uh, from five and six. Law was viewed uh, as a field for men. Uh, what drove your choice, or rather, what inspired you to study at the University of Nairobi? Believe it or not, uh, <coughs> law was never my choice of a career. Never. Interesting. <laughs> law was my father's choice of a career for me. It was never mine. My father was in the provincial, educa education, um, provincial administration. Um, there, there were four of them that were in the provincial administration before independence. And he was one of them. Wow. Yes, yeah, so during that time, as he... I would uh, call that an achievement. <laughs> Only four in the colonial era. Yes, Isaac Okwiri, the late. Uh, Karithi, the late. Johnston um, from Mombasa, Shako. Mm -hmm. And my father, E.O. Josiah. They were just the four of them before independence. At that time, that, what was known as Jean School, Kabete. Mm -hmm. And they were trained as magistrates. Right. So my father told me that from the training they got, he, he thought that in the family, I could follow that. And once you started the course, did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. And he tricked me one morning because he just told me the previous evening that tomorrow you'll come with me when I'm going to work. That time he was now a member of the Public Service Commission. <laughs> he, he had stopped working at the provincial um, administration. Right. He didn't tell me where we are we would be going and those were days you didn't ask your father, you didn't ask your parent questions. Definitely. Today even my grandson mm. or my grand, they asked me every question but those were the days. That's very true. So I got into the car with him, I saw him branch, there used to be a sign on Gong Road, K Kenya School of Law, we branched there, we walked into the office, the, the principal was Tudor Jackson, he got in and he told Tudor Jackson this is my daughter and I want her to become a lawyer. That is the process that ended in me being a lawyer. What made you pick this path uh, rather than private practice? Um, when I completed the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. and then a Kenya School of Law, at that time, if I remember, most of the magistrates and judges were from the Commonwealth. Great Britain, India, mm -hmm. Pakistan, right. name it. Mm -hmm. And, think, and I think there was a need to Kenyanize the bench. So they started looking for uh, those who had qualified and completed Kenya School of Law to join the bench, and we were, to, we were joining at the lowest level possible. Actually, it, I wasn't aware of this fact. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was described as district We really did need to Kenyanize it at that mm -hmm. point in time. Yeah, that's, I think so. So several of us uh, went for an, we were invited for an interview. And the interview was for district magistrate grade two, DM two. 
and here I, you have got your degree, law degree, Kenya School of Law, and you're joining the bench at the lowest level possible. I think there was extreme dedication on your part, because obviously, you know, government job, private practice, private practice brings in more money. So I must commend <laughs> you for that decision. Yeah, I, that was the decision I made that I wanted to get into magistracy. In 1983, after rising through the ranks, you were appointed as a judge of the High Court. Yes. Um, Obviously, you were the second woman yes, to take I up was. that position after Lady Justice Effie O'Ward. Yes, that's true. Uh, who was appointed a couple of years earlier. Yes, that's true. Tell us about this progression. We worked hard. Right. And being only two women, we gave it our best. And as I said, most of the judges were from the Commonwealth. And two women surrounded by men. You may describe it so. And I remember one of our colleagues uh, one day saying that, thank God there are only two of you. <laughs> well, so we didn't realize we were so strong. If there were more, yeah. we would be in trouble. We didn't realize we were so strong, but we gave it our best. And we wanted to, you know, we were role modeling. We realized there are only two of us, and yet there are so many other women. So if we are the ones who are here first, she was there first, mm. and I joined her. Mm. In fact, somehow... I used to read about her cases, and that's one of the reasons that also inspired me. No. Over the years, you have progressed to a fabulous level. And I say it again, <laughs> thanks to you uh, and uh, Lady Justice Sefi Owo. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. You set the platform and then inspired the rest. We hope we did. You definitely did. Yeah. While, while on the bench, uh, there are three areas that you've... Uh, that you have made significant contributions to. Uh, arbitration, uh, where you are now involved. And before I move further, uh, you can tell us a little bit more about what's your role in Sudan right now, in southern Sudan. Yes. From about uh, July this year, from about June, July, I think uh, Igad was head hunting mm -hmm. for people who could reform the judiciary of South Sudan. That's how I got involved in this program. I was literally head-hunted by IGAD. And they did that. Uh, at least they wanted two judges, and they got me, and they also got Judge Ogola from Uganda. So we are two judges who are from this region, who are both retired, and are doing work in South Sudan, reforming the judiciary as per the revitalized agreement that brought peace in, in South Sudan. Right. One, one component of it was a reformed judiciary in South Sudan. And that's the work we are doing now, reforming the judiciary of South Sudan. We are not, we are not starting from scratch, but they themselves, the, you know, the different forces in, 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 um, in the different parties in, in, in South Sudan, mm -hmm. they wanted their judiciary reformed, and that's the work we are doing. They gave us um, 10 lawyers, five from the government, five from the opposi uh, opposition to work with. So they are nationals, they are based in Sudan. I'm based in Kenya, Judge Ugola is based in uh, Uganda. But we travel um, to Sudan ever so often, South Sudan, because the work is massive. So we have formed five different committees, mm -hmm. you know, judicial uh, structure of the judiciary, pub um, judicial service commission, training, all this is going on at the same time. So we have divided uh, the team. And once we finish uh, public participation in Juba, we are going to go to the states. Here I would be saying we are going to the counties, but in, in South Sudan, there are states. Uh, tell us about this division uh, that is still seen as the divorce court and on <laughs> sexual offenses. Um, what happened was... Um, what concerned me was that family matters were always listed in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I don't know for what reason. So I didn't think this was a good idea. And over and above that, then the, there was a the period of HIV and AIDS. Father, husband, wife died, children remained um, 
some never going back to school because of you know who was going to pay school fees or some of them the parents had money but how are they going to access this money a very sad reality S very so suddenly the issue of uh, letters of administration they would say, uh, people would say go to the court get that document go, the banks would tell them get that document if you are the, the guardian so all these factors uh, uh, made me approach the chief justice of the day and I told the chief justice we have the criminal division we have the civil division the commercial division had just been established mm -hmm. and I told the chief justice we need a family division what about sexual offenses how how do you reform that area um, first of all the sexual offenses uh, act was passed in in parliament mm -hmm. and uh, the current uh, supreme court judge Njo Kindungu was uh, she spearheaded that in parliament right yeah and it was passed and it was now an act of parliament and then i was given that a, a task force was formed and i was asked to chair that, to task, chair that task force yeah yes. to chair that task force the initial initial i in fact i stopped chairing the task force when i was elected a judge to go to a judge of the international criminal court that's when i stopped yeah and this was um, you know trying to understand what what this act was all about right. and trying to you know to make kenyans understand we have this sexual offenses act these are the provisions these are the, you know just trying to to make it work yeah yeah i i, I started on i did that quite a bit and um, i had to stop because i was going to another jurisdiction how has the current process changed how judges get appointed uh, to the upper courts there is definitely a big change and i like what's happening now positions when they are vacant they are advertised people apply judges apply they are advertised and they are interviewed during my time you know um some like me for example i was informed a day or two before that you'll be going to the state house on such and such a day to be sworn in as a court of appeal judge mm. It wasn't as transparent as it is now. Now, in 2009, you were elected to the International Criminal Court. Tell us about the process of joining the bench at the ICC. I was nominated by the Kenya government. Then you go to, um, then you go to run for elections. All these international courts, judges join them through elections, and elections are held, conducted in New York at the General Assembly. Our elections were conducted uh, General Assembly of States parties in New York. Mm -hmm. But first of all, you have to be nominated, and nomination is by your country. So the Kenya government nominated me to run for this position. Okay. Fortunately, I was successful because that year alone, from Africa, we were 22 candidates. 2018 is... Uh Till 2018, you were there for nine years, right? Yeah. In service. Yes, please. And you were vice president of the court. What are the lessons gained? But when I left uh, the judiciary of Kenya and I joined the ICC, yeah. I'd never really, um, I'd never really used my computer to do court work. No, because we were writing as witnesses, gave evidence. We took it down mm -hmm. in, in 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 longhand. Right. Uh, at that time, I, I doubt whether any judges were using computers. But at the International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. it's highly computerized. As I sit in court, because trial you sit three judges, uh, appeal you sit um, five judges, each judge has a computer in front. Mm -hmm. There is simultaneous translation, and uh, that's going on all the time. And uh, that would only be stopped if a judge needs a clarification or something. And um, that was something that I was handling for the first time. And then um, the Rome Statute that created the court is a fused system, common law and civil law. Mm -hmm. So you'd be sitting three of you judges or five of you, maybe four uh, common law judges or civil law background. That was something also that was new to me because um, the common law and the civil law, the civil law um, system, judges tend to question witnesses as if they are the prosecution too much. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's not a system in the, in the common law. The prosecutor does the questioning 
and we would only probably interject for clarifications mm -hmm. or things like that. You received the Distinguished Alumna Award and the Honoris Causa from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy where you did your uh, mm. Masters in International Diplomacy. Yeah. And what did this mean for you? You got two awards from this university. Yeah. And apparently Honoris Causa is the highest award that one can receive. And this was the first time it was uh, granted to a black person, an African. A person of color, shall I put it that way, as my daughter tells me, Mom, it's a the person of... The first black woman, an extremely... Yeah. That was 2018, actually. By that time, I had already retired from the... An honorable achievement. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. It's been an extreme honor hosting you on The Living Legends. Thank you for inviting me and uh, asking me all these questions because I look back now and I want to say that I have lived, uh, I have done my best and I still continue. That's why I'm still in Sudan, South Sudan, to reform the judiciary. It's been an extreme pleasure speaking to Lady Justice retired Joyce Alwatch, a trailblazer in Kenya's legal and judicial arena. She led the team that normalized Cricket Kenya, is a globally certified mediator, served as Vice President of the International Criminal Court and has had different positions of leadership in the Kenyan judiciary. Today, she is still active as a transformation consultant for different jurisdictions. Thank you, Lady Justice, and thank you for watching this episode of The Living Legends. I am Fayaz Qureshi. You know, Toby, such a humbling experience yeah. uh, interviewing an absolute uh, legend, a real veteran. That is Justice Joyce Alwatch. That's great. And yeah. you know, the, her, her achievements, her accolades. Okay, I need a whole program to list them down. And she's still very active. Having retired, uh, she's reforming uh, the constitution in uh, southern Sudan. And she's all over Europe. Uh, she's served with the uh, ICC, an absolute legend. It was a, an extreme honor for me to have actually interviewed her. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it's always great because like what I know about the justices is that, you know, the older they become, the wiser they become. So it's not about like, you know, they have got like a retirement age or something. They, they can actually, okay, fine, maybe in formal employment, but they can still go and even after the formal employment, they still have a lot to, you know, to contribute well, like to society. Like you said, they keep getting wiser. And I yeah, think get wiser. She can go on for a long, long time. Yeah, they can. Uh, they can. They can. And get, yeah. A real intellectual and uh, extreme honor and pride for us Kenyans to have someone like that. Very the humble. system. Very humble as yeah. well. That's great. Yeah, fine. So, okay, fine. Like, uh, you know, earlier on, Holland is doing great in the English Premier League. Yeah, he's going to go places. Definitely. Yeah, but Ronaldo is not really finding very well. I know you follow a lot of the EPL. What do you I am take so on Ronaldo? Ex I am extremely disappointed, Toby. How can you put a legend like Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench of Manchester United for the past couple of weeks? When you lose 6 3 to Man City, when, when, Man City, when this man could have come and scored those three goals for you. I don't agree to that. And they say he's not good enough anymore. Yeah, well, maybe because they say uh, you build a team around, like, you know, I think the coach's choice and the coach's choice. But of course, I mean, that's football. And of course, uh, uh, anything happens, there's always a coach is a, is a person who decides the team and so on. And of course, I know we've had a very great uh, bumper harvest today on the sporting scene. And hope that you stay with us throughout the week because, you know, KDC Channel One is your true sports partner. And remember the World Cup coming up later next month will be shown on KBC Channel One. So do not go away. Keep it KBC. I'm Topi Lambila with the sports tonight. I'm wishing you a great week ahead. Thank you, Topi. That's all from our newsroom. Uh, join us next week for the Legends Edition at 9 p.m. Our sign language interpreter for tonight's edition was Anne Wangeshi. Thank you very much. I'm Fayaz Qureshi.